It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer and I'm going back to my roots, quite literally. When I first started this channel in 2010, I was very much interested in kind of just standard best bitters really. It's all I kind of knew, it's all I kind of grew up on. My parents, grandparents drunk that sort of beer. Um, so naturally I started to drink that sort of beer I liked it my parents introduced me to beer probably as a 14 year old and uh, of course you you acquire a taste and you get used to that kind of taste in beer so when all my friends then started drinking at 17 18 and they were all drinking the wishy-washy daggers I was kind of being laughed at for being the old man bitter guy um, but I never used to mind I never used to mind because I liked it um, I didn't like the feel of Back then, I didn't like all of that carbonation that lager offered, especially the kind of wishy-washy lagers that um, were, were, were around in those days. They're still around in these days. And so, of course, when I started my YouTube channel, naturally, I was started off life reviewing beers like Courage Best and know, other best bitters. So this is, going back to my roots, this is kind of a beer from St. Hostel Brewery, and it's called Cornish Best. It's 3.4% ABV. It was relatively cheap in Asda. I think it was about £1.75 a bottle. Um, it's very light in the ABV. Uh, be interesting to see what Cornwall thinks of Best Bitter is and what we kind of consider Best Bitter up in South Wales. We always have these kind of like brains bitters and stuff. There's the bottle cap. Now, what I'm expecting from this beer is because it's from St. Hostel and they're a newer, oh, I say they're a newer brewery, they've been going since 1851. Um, I imagine that this might be quite light. This might be kind of, I don't know, for some reason I think pale ale. Never seen the beer before. Dark brown bottle, let's get it out into a glass, see what we get. A little bit of smoke on the bottle opening. Beer in the glass, is it light? Is it like a, like a best bitter? Oh, it's like a best bitter. Look at that straight away. I just added in my head that this was going to be really light. I don't know why. Maybe because a lot of St. Ostel's beers are quite light. So why do I feel that this beer is a relatively new beer and it's been brought out by maybe somebody from London? Well... The former head brewer of Fuller's, uh, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, I'm not a beer dictionary, <laughs> um, some might know her name, but, but she made her way down to St Hostel to become St Hostel's head brewer. And I, may, I think this might be her influence actually, this might be her kind of, hey, in London we sell quite a lot of low ABV beer, so why don't we have one round here? I'm just guessing, this beer might have been around for a long time. Who knows? They just decided to package it. We got a one finger white head, good levels of carbonation, amber coloured beer in the glass. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> it's not bottle conditioned. It reminds me of the old days, this. I feel like a 30 year old again. <laughs> Looks good. Looks really good. Let's get the aroma. It smells decent, really, really decent. Nutty, biscuity, bready. But hoppy, in a kind of some hostile kind of hoppy way. A little bit of lemon maybe. Touch of orange peel. It smells good, spicy and lovely. Let's dive in. Cheers everybody. I've just been at the back sweeping up and moving garden furniture around before the winter comes in. We got Storm Agnes coming today, so uh, I need this beer. I've kind of worked up a thirst. Cheers. I mean, we have to take it for what it is. It smelled really good. <laughs> it smelled really good, but it's 3.4% it's ABV. This isn't a 
5% premium ale. It's not supposed to be a 5% premium ale. If you want a 5% premium ale from St. Hostel, then look at beers like Tribute or Proper Job. You know, they're the higher end, kind of higher ABV beers. This is, well, actually, if I'm honest, I don't know who this is for or what's this for, if I'm perfectly honest with you. And I'll give you my reasons why now. It's nicely carbonated. It's disappointingly tinny and metallic. That's a real shame. I come into this kind of thinking this could be a really good beer from St. Hostel, but it's tinny and metallic and that's a real shame. <clears throat> Almost tastes like one of those Aldi beers. You know the the Aldi when they, when Aldi try and bring out like a region of it and they're really tinny and metallic. Yeah, it kind of got that kind of Aldi feel about it. Maybe as they approached St. Hostel or St. Hostel approached Asda, either or, and they, they said, hey, we can put something really cheap on your shelves for you um, with this whole cost of living thing. I don't know, but um, I always feel with beers like this that I'd rather pay a few more pence. I'd rather pay a little bit more money and get something a little bit more half decent. It's It's very watery. It's very tinny, it's very metallic. It's quite disappointing, actually. There's a little bit of nuttiness coming through, but... but it, it, it almost kind of like reminds me of something like Stone's Bitter. It was something that was once really good and now it's not very good anymore. You see Stone's Bitter sometimes in Asda. Yeah, it reminds me of like a cheap Stones Bitter these days, or or like a Flowers Original, or a or a Ruddles, like a Ruddles or something like that, you know. But how did we get to this kind of like three point four percent ABV best bitter? Well, it was all to do with the World Wars. What happened was, before World War I, World War II, beer used to be naturally about 6% ABV, 5-6% ABV. But when they started to ration malt, they were looking to put malt into more kind of bread production. Beer had to go on the back foot. So when they were still producing beer, they had to kind of reduce the malt. And when you reduce the malt, of course, you're reducing the, the alcohol. So beers went from being 5% ABV, they fell all the way down to 34 36 Kind of best bitters were massive in the 80s, 90s, 1970s. Uh, but I just don't think there's much call for it anymore, especially with the craft beer revolution, especially for the... People want to drink something slightly stronger, a little bit more flavoursome these days, and they don't mind paying a little bit more money for it either. And that's where I'm sitting with this beer. It, it kind of... It almost seems very pointless... It almost seems very pointless. Now, my next review is, it was sitting on the shelf next to it in Asda, actually. It was like the best bitter corner of Asda. My next review coming up on the channel shortly is Theakston Best Bitter, 3.8% ABV. Now, I'm hoping, because Theakston, a little bit more northern, a little bit more kind of traditional, I'm hoping that this beer is going to be a little bit better. First time I've ever tried it, that'll be on the channel in the next few days. Have a look for Theakston Best Bitter. Um, so my rating for this then, um, what does it say? It's going to be some marketing bump on the back. Cornish Best is a well-balanced, easy drinking ale, rich malt and biscuit notes, complement subtle fruit and toffee flavours, and a hint of bitterness. A Moorish, I hate that word, a Moorish sessionable ale full of character. Ah, nice. Nah, it's, it's, it's water, barley, rye, oat, hops and yeast, oats. Oats in here. I imagine it's probably better on cask. It's probably a much better beer on cask. But for me, it's way too metallic. I will be buying that one again. That's a poor 
poor example of a best bitter. It, it, it's really just a nothing beer that's quite metallic. Um, it, it, it's a middling, meddling five out of ten. Five, five out of ten from Real Craft Beer. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom. Cheers.